he was commenting this way, Gary Reasons, the fact that he was so not down but disappointed in himself of last week's performance that I've got to do a lot better. And he does that because he's a leader. He understands that he needs to improve his game. You know, he had to be pleased with six touchdowns on the day and the coming out party that he had for the Sooners, but he knows there's a lot of room ahead for him to improve in this offense overall. Trey Sermon just to the right now of Jalen Hurts. OU scored on their first possession last week versus Houston. Sermon, left side, able to get a couple. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. The offense for the Oklahoma Sooners as they begin. And only big question mark for them has been a left tackle. But we look at the backfield. Sermon, Hall, C.D. Lamb, Basquin, Falcaterra, and Rambo. And we do understand R.J. Proctor is going to get the start at left tackle. But he will be switching, of course, with Eric Swenson. They did that last week. Hurts his first pass. Throws deep in the sideline. C.D. Lamb's got it at the 40. Inside the 40, they'll mark him down to the 38-yard line. 35 yards on the pass and catch, but we have a penalty. Yeah, we may have a holding in the backfield back there, but that was an excellent step up and throw the football by Hertz. Holding on the 77 offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still second down. Yeah, Eric Swenson on the left side. He did get the start tonight, Ron. They put him out there at left tackle, and he just grabbed a little bit there. We'll take a look at it and see what happens on this play. As Jalen Hurts, he takes an inside move, and that's against their best pass rusher. That is someone who they have to stop, Darren Greenfield. Early penalty here for this offensive line kind of sets them back a little bit. And you talk about that South Dakota defense. Darren Greenfield, two-time All-American. Oklahoma, though, now pushed back inside the 20. You look at the defensive line. Hurts just flares it out. Left side, the Lamb spins his way up over the 30, close to the first down. He'll be about a yard and a half, two yards short. Well, this 14 on the pickup, Gary. Yeah, Ron, this defense is going to have to match the intensity and the speed if they can with Oklahoma. I'm not sure they're going to have enough speed on the field. Right with the Coyotes to be able to handle that, but they've got to keep plays in front of them and make tackles. They can't allow yard after contact, which what occurred there for Lance. And that's what the coaches were telling us earlier this week from South Dakota. On third down, Hurts pass incomplete. Pass was intended for Calcaterra. OU faced third down only eight times last week in Houston. They converted five of those in our Air Comfort Solutions. Marquee matchup will be tonight. How about, as you were talking about, Gary, the defensive speed of Oklahoma and South Dakota secondary? Well, the secondary has to step up here. They've got to make plays. That was a good play by the safety, Mike Johnson, coming down, breaking that ball up there. So it brings up a fourth down and punting situation early in the ball game here. I'd call that a win for South Dakota on this initial drive. Cody Case standing back at his own 22-yard line. This will, if it is returned, it'll be the first return of the year for South Dakota. Munchow's kick. Bear caught at the 30-yard line. Kick will be 48 yards. No return. Yeah, it comes off his hand pretty well. I watched him in warm-ups, and he does throw the ball very nice. And looks forward, look forward to seeing how he displays this offense. Hayden Brooks in the backfield. They go to the right side. Good surge by that right side of South Dakota. Pickup of seven on the play. Well, this is a spread-style offense, kind of like Oklahoma. They're going to do things on their tempo and their, their, how they like to get things done. See Kai Henry there getting the start of his ballgame. He was dinged up a little bit last week. Looks like he's going to play today. And he only had 125 yards rushing last week. They want to improve on that a lot. Quick flick outside. We were talking about that'll be short of the first down. Dakari Allen picks up a couple. We take a look at the Oklahoma defense. Well, you know, there's a lot of familiar faces and there's some new ones here for Oklahoma. But overall, what they've tried to do is bring in a new style of defense with Alex Grinch, a new big defensive coordinator. And right there, Kenneth Murray's going to be the catalyst, I think, to all of it in the front end and in the back end. So just see how well they de de develop from week one to week two. They had a pretty good outing early in the, in the ball game last week against Houston. Well, South Dakota was only two of ten on third down last week versus Montana. I spent bring it down hand off to Brooks and it's going to be very very close if it's where the official is marking it it'll be about a half a yard short I think you're right Ron it's going to be just short there brings up that fourth down so 
What does Coach Nielsen do here with this offense? You're on the road, bring that punt team out there. I think that's the right decision here. Try to, you know, flip the field, win the field position battle if you can, but a couple of uh, drives that neither offense got going here with first down. Brady Shutt will be kicking it away, was third in the Missouri Valley Football Conference last year in punting. Averaged just under 43 yards a kick, had four punts last week. That averaged 49, and C.D. Lamb set to return it. He's got enough leg, 49 yards average yeah. last week. Impressive. Let's see what he can do. He's got a south wind behind him. Line drive. That's going to send C.D. Lamb backing it up. Wow. Takes a big hop, and it goes into the end zone. 60 yards on the kick. Jalen Hurts will come back out of the football field. Second possession for the Sooners when we come back. We are scoreless in the first. Let's take a look at the Travis Watkins key players of the game for both teams. For South Dakota, Greenfield, we've talked about him and Allen. Gary? Yeah, we got a defensive lineman. I think he's already impacted the game already with a penalty. Allen going to be a big target out there. Defensively for Oklahoma, Kenneth Murray is going to be all around the football, I think. Creed Humphrey, the returning offensive lineman, the all-star, can he can set that offensive line up for success? Week two, they're going to hope to make a lot more improvement from that offensive group. Kennedy Brooks now comes into the backfield along with Jalen Hurts. Brooks 46 yards rushing last week. Hurts keeps it, rolls, tucks it, heads to the sideline, scampers out of bounds at about the 28-yard line as we take a look at our River Wind playbook. Well, for these guys, I think it's overall, they're going to have to find ways to utilize the offensive line. They have to have a key. They have to be balanced for, for South Dakota for them to be able to produce anything. And about the defense, it's not about Oklahoma. It's about them. And for Oklahoma offensively, these pieces, the offensive line, the receivers, they've all got to come together. We'll talk more about that defense as the game goes on. Owen Brooks again to the backfield. Hurts straight drop. Got time. Going deep. Far side. Up for grab. The safety thought he had him covered, but Lamb with an outstanding effort. Well, Jalen Hurts has a lot of confidence in C.D. Lamb, his catch radius and what he's able to do. This is just kind of a sink, and when he gets his head back around for the football, he sees where it is. He makes his, he makes up enough room for that ball to come down and makes an excellent grab. 48 yards, the longest of the year for him is Rambo. Dances inside the 20-yard line. Gets his head around, looks for that football. It comes in, he pulls it in. Excellent grab, and then they get right back to work. Tossing one down there to Charleston Rambo, who's a speedy receiver. There's a lot of talent with these wide receivers that Jalen Hurts at his, at his, that it has at his disposal. You know, last week, Jalen Hurts had seven passes plus 15 yards, three passes plus 40. He's got one plus 40 tonight. Again, Holland Brooks in the backfield. Has it still cuts back, looks for a block, gets down to the 15 yard line. That'll be about a yard short of the first down. Cameron Klein, the senior out of San Diego, California, making the stop. He doesn't look like he's moving really fast, but he's hard to tackle. He's very quick. He gets his top end in speed in very quickly. That's what separates him as a unique player. He's able to run and get something out of nothing because of his, his very quick top end speed. So Jalen Hurts showing that he can move the ball on the ground as well. Third down, they need just one. Kennedy Brooks from the pistol. Rambo split wide to the left. Brooks got the first down. And Beverly Flag is thrown. Gets down to the seven-yard line, but we'll have to wait to see what the flag is. If it is against Oklahoma, that's not going to make Lincoln Riley very happy. One of the things he emphasized with us over the last two days, clean up the penalties. Holding number 73. Offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, still third down. And that's R.J. Proctor, so he and Swenson both have penalties in this ball game there. They're playing, one's playing guard, one's playing tackle now, so they've got to clean those up. They don't want to have those things be able to shoot them in the foot to give them negative field position. Continue going backwards here when this offense seems to be clicking a little bit through the air, a little bit through the, on the ground, but you don't want penalties. Bill Bingo, the offensive line coach, does not like getting two penalties holding penalties in the opening quarter. Now that sets up a third down and eight ball at the 23-yard line. Three wide receivers set. Hurts looks, steps up, looks across the middle, wide open. First down, C.D. Lamb down to the three. 
20 yards on the pickup. Well, it was a two-deep zone coverage, and C.D. Land comes across the field and makes himself available to Jalen Hurts, who looks all around the field, but finally comes down to his number one target, and simple throw and catch, he gets inside the five-yard line. Oklahoma scored on five of its six trips into the red zone last week. Trey Sermon now in the backfield. Fake it to Sermon. Hurts, touchdown, Oklahoma. C.D. Lamb, it's already his night. Well, really just a one receiver route here for Oklahoma because C.D. Lamb on the outside, he has the entire back of the end zone. Watch this area here, it's completely clear, and he runs through it to be able to get that touchdown. Easy target for Jalen Hurts to throw to, and good play design as everything was in front of them. C.D. Lamb's second touchdown of the season, Caleb Sutherland. Had a rough outing last week on for the extra point. Missed a couple of field goals, but Lincoln Riley telling us yesterday he's not concerned. Extra point is good. Seven plays, 80 yards. This is pretty, Gary. Yes, it is. Right over the ball. C.D. Lamb makes himself available. Good first score here for the Sooners. Got to be a tough time for you and your family. How are they doing right now? No, thank God for life, you know, you're alive, but uh, at his most, you know, uh, being on the island and seeing all the, you know, the catastrophic events that happen, you know, it's tough to watch, it's tough to see, you know, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, talking to my mom and family and friends, you know, uh, they're just all traumatized, you know, it's something that has never happened before in the islands, and uh, they're just trying to figure out how to, you know, live, get through the day in the, in the, on the island, so it's, it's pretty tough, but, uh, you know, thank God for life such a beautiful place so many beautiful people there so friendly i know you're not only trying to help your family but everybody there so how are you trying to spread the word right now you know i'm i'm, I'm spreading the word well like, you know i have a gofundme page you know uh no i had buddy hill hurricane hurricane dorm relief you know you can go there and donate you know my foundation page at buddyhill.org uh just click the link and uh it's on my instagram on my twitter you know uh and there's you got a lot of behemoth athletes are going to see me too and uh you know, a lot of people stepped up, so uh, no, any support you guys can give, you know, it's, 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 it's worth it. I know the NBA season is right around the sure. corner, so do you get to go see your family? Do you just talk to them? Because I know you're about to get really busy. For sure. You know, uh, I, I might go in for a day and uh, try to help on the island for a little bit, you know, and uh, that's where I grew up. You know, it's, it's up to see videos. I want to go there and see, see myself and uh, help my family and friends, but uh, I think the Kings allow me to go too, And uh, but uh, it, it, it'll be... You know, it'd be hard to go and watch, but uh, that's my people. I got to go there, and uh, that's why I'm here. I have the platform to do it. All right, thanks, buddy. You're using your platform for good. We appreciate it. People go donate. Back to you, Ron. All right. Absolutely a great cause. Cody Case on the reception, by the way. And also, Buddy Heal, good friends with John Quill Jones in the WNBA, and they've gotten together to try to help the people in the Bahamas. And Buddy Hill made it, made a $100,000 donation himself to the cause, so he's stepping up with his pocketbook as well. He is a special young man. We're seeing Cody Case, outstanding coyote, pass into the flat pot, Drew Greenshaw. His first reception, Trey Brown was on the coverage. We saw a couple of receptions by Cody Case. He's a dynamic player. And talking to the radio guys from South Dakota, they said he is probably the fastest on the team. Maybe Wesley Elador could beat him, but they think Cody Case is Mr. Speed. Yeah, and just talk to the Oklahoma coaches. They think that this young man could fit very well in the Big 12 type of uh, programs here. So they think he's got that type of ability, and they look, look forward to that matchup with Cody Case. Brooks in the backfield along with Simmons. Simmons straight drop, penalty flag thrown into the flat, incomplete. Pass intended for Allen. Probably going to have a penalty here, Ron, in the backfield. Looks like there may be a holding call on the offensive front for South Dakota. Personal foul, chop block, number 75 to 25, offense. 15-yard penalty from the previous squad. Now let's go to our so studios, check in with a... All right, we were talking about Michigan and Army.
Oklahoma knows a little bit about that. Pass incomplete intended for Allen. And you and I were coming over here, and of course, we we're trying to keep up with the mission in the Army score. And you were here last year. Army is tough to prepare for. Yeah, Army's a heck of a ball club. And I, I tell you, Jeff Monken, their, their head coach, did a great job. And they came in here last year as a game in overtime, this year overtime with Michigan. Quality stuff for those guys. Third down, they need 17. Pressure on, penalty flag thrown again. Pass is way too high, incomplete. The flag came from the far side. David Aguebu was putting the pressure on Austin Simmons. Offside, number 96, defense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Still third down. Now that's LaRon Stokes, defensive lineman, you know, getting a little quick start there on this thing. He had a good pass rush from his buddy, Marcus Stripling, who hit the quarterback. 96 is going to be right up here, and he's going to come up a little early. Let's take a look and see. He gets off. Yeah, just a little bit soon. But Stripling got onto the quarterback there as a good, good uh, pass rush. Got by the tackle and hit the quarterback well. That's the third penalty against Oklahoma. And that's one of the things that defensive coordinator Alex Grinch really singled out yesterday in our conversations. Those useless penalties. Here's Simmons. Into the flat. Pass incomplete. Good defense by Oklahoma's Pardell Motley. Well, this defense is built on speed, and when you're able to line up your middle linebacker on the outside and be the initial pass rusher in the middle of the field, this is speed at its best because Kenneth Murray lines up here, and he comes right inside and right there on the quarterback making the hit. That's the kind of production that I think that Alex Grinch wants out of his star middle linebacker, Kenneth Murray. C.D. Lamb again standing on the 10. Didn't get a chance to return a punt the last time. Shep launched his last one 60 yards. Another good punt. Lamb takes it, goes to the right from the five. Nice downfield tackle. C.D. Lamb went over 2,000 career yards receiving against Houston. He's got four receptions already today, Gary. Yeah, he's an exceptional athlete. Get the ball in his hands, good things are going to happen. He makes yards after contact. He adjusts his body very well for the football, makes himself available to his quarterback, and he knows how to run these routes. He's an, ex he's an experienced receiver in this offense. He is set for a tremendous year. He's showing out big time tonight. You know, when I were, you and I were talking to Lincoln Riley and Leslie were talking to Lincoln yesterday, he lit up when talking about C.D. Lamb and you can see what he did in 2018 and set the OU freshman record back in 2017. He goes, here's a player that enjoys the game. He loves coming to practice. And he gets better and better and better. We'll talk more about him and his skill set and how his body has improved throughout you know, his time here at Oklahoma. And it's made him a better, better player overall. Gray Sermon bounces off right side. That's back over the 10 up to the 11-yard line. Jake Matthew coming up from that linebacker spot to make the stop for the Coyotes, but not before he picked up eight. A little bit of a power run game there. That's what they like to see. Sometimes you just got to put your uh, hand on the ground and block the guy in front of you, and that's what the Sooners did that time. It's just a good power run. Get you seven, eight yards. Sooners rushed for 354 yards last week. Second down and short. This is the kind of situation you want if you're Oklahoma. Herman again, room over the 30, up to the 40 to the 42-yard line, Trey Sermon. Play covered 30 yards. Corey Fant coming up to finally make the stop. A little misdirection. Watch the guard, Ely coming around, seals the end there from his left guard spot, and it does a nice job allowing him to get out in front. So Trey Sermon getting behind the big guys and running open space, and... Big play there in the offense. Sermon will stay in. He had a 31-yard scamper last week. Two weeks in a row, plus 30 on a run. Why not give it to him again? Tries to bounce away. He's going to lose a yard. Nice play by Luis Peguero, the senior out of Wellington, Florida, loss of two. Peguero just kind of hung in there and got off the block and made a good sure tackle on a tough running back. So... South Dakota's needing to kind of slow down this run game right now and get into the gaps, get off the blocks, and make contact. Figueroa did a nice job there. I'm anxious to see if the Oklahoma offensive line, all of which are over three bills, how they handle that defensive line of the Coyotes. Nobody over 275. Here's Hurts. Has some time, throws off the back foot, up for grabs, incomplete. 
Not a good pass. Opportunity for an interception there, but did not go their way. This defense, they're going to need to make plays, and unfortunately that ball did not come down in the hands of the defender. So trying to get it to Calcaterra. Ball is contested. Good play there to knock it away. Jack Cocker, the team captain, the only linebacker with experience to start for the Coyotes. And it was the second leading tackle last year. Oklahoma now goes with a five wide receiver set. Hertz looks over the defense. Third down and 12. Hertz. Penalty flag thrown in the backfield. He'll get the first down, but it's probably coming back. Cameron Klein making the stop. That flag was thrown early. Gary. Yeah, it was. It really was. And going to be a holding call in the backfield. Interesting. That was an audible at the line of scrimmage with Jalen Hurts trying to get uh, his receivers holding in different spots. On the 77. Offense. Offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still third down. It's, it's going to be the left tackle here. Swenson does another hold here on the left side and that's Darren Greenfield once again that's the second penalty that he's caused in this yeah. game. that left hand out there is is enough for the penalty to be called so they've got to get that straightened out you got to move your feet you got to get your hands in front of the defender and right now Swenson is just reaching too much second holding penalty on Swenson the third holding penalty on Oklahoma now it's third down in a bunch 22 hurts Straight drop, four-man rush, plenty of pressure. Throws over the middle, caught inside the 45 to C.D. Lamb, his fifth reception of the evening. Well, it's a good, comfortable throw and a good pocket that time for the quarterback to step up in the middle and throw the ball to the middle of the field with C.D. Lamb coming across. So, good job on the route, good protection, and a good throw there by Jalen Hurts. C.D. Lamb, two receptions last week. He's lighting it up tonight with five. Already with a touchdown. Fresh set of downs for Oklahoma. That was third down and 22 also. Thank you to Sermon. Wide open, caught, Rambo. Down to the 25-yard line, a pickup of 19 and a first down. Well, Charleston Rambo, I think, is one of the gems here in this offense. He's running an inside route here, a slant route. Ball a little bit behind him, but he's got such a good catch radius, much like C.D. Lamb. He's got great top-end speed. I like him on down-the-field routes, able to stretch the defense. He's going to be another big weapon for the Sooner offense. Well, here's our triple I A drive summary. Six plays, 72 yards so far. This is the seventh play. Sermon. Penalty flag again. A two penalty flags are thrown. I think Bill Beanbo, the former <laughs> center, for Hal Mummy is about to explode on the sideline if this is another hold. Holding on the 59. Offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. Well, Creed Humphrey and Tyrese Robinson, the only offensive lineman without a hold so far tonight. Yeah, left side. Here we go. We'll take a look at it here. We'll figure out what happened with Adrian Ely. Yeah, you get this hand on the outside right there. That's what they're going to call all the time. So you got to know what to do with your hands. Put them inside and push. Put it on that outside of the pad. They're going to catch that every time. Lincoln Riley told us back in spring that the line is going through a process and they have to learn. On the pitch, Hazelwood cuts back inside the 20 yard line down to the 17. Jaden Hazelwood, a talented freshman out of Ellenwood, Georgia, picks up 18. Tisdale on the stop. Well, he's a freshman and he's going to be a star player. There's no doubt about that. He was the number one recruited receiver in America coming out this last class and they like everything about that young man with his speed you see them getting the pitch to him there getting out running the football good times ahead for that young man I tell you, he tweaked his ankle in the spring didn't really get a lot of playing time but they are very high on him a wealth of talent at wide receiver Sermon left side pushes way to the first down you know, what I like about Trey Sermon is he makes a decision and then he goes full exactly. bore for it. You know, and don't try to dance around and possibly get a negative play. Trey Sermon has learned enough about this offense. If you see a gap, go ahead and take it. It's good to get three, four, five yards. In that case, he got a first down for the Sooners. What a leap he had last week against Houston. Little Ronaldo Nehemiah for those oldsters who remember him. Willis and Sermon now in the backfield. Sermon. 
Down to about the eight-yard line. Trey Sermon, the junior out of Marietta, Georgia. Yeah, that's just kind of a strict block play there. Everybody's going to block out in front. He's looking for a gap. He'll take any gap that he sees. That one was to the outside, but South Dakota did a good job on the outside, not allowing that edge to, to get for him to get around that edge and held him to a short game. They can get a first down down to the two-yard line. Second down and seven. Tenth play of the drive. Hurts, time, look, throws, touchdown, Oklahoma, Jeremiah Hall. Second touchdown of the season. Let's hope he doesn't go over to the tight end and H-back coach Shane Beaver and headbutt him this time. Well, the linebacker Cochran turns to the left quickly because Halen, Jalen Hurts goes there, but back to the right is where the ball's going to come. He's going to leak out of the backfield and just could not get there quick enough. Jack Cochran kind of in the middle of that thing. Well, Hall scored OU's first touchdown last week, headbutted Beaver. Beaver had to get stitches. And so the coaching staff jokingly put Coach Beaver on the injured list at the beginning of the week. Even had some highlights of him. Ten plays, 97 yards, just over five minutes and 40 seconds. Oklahoma leads 14-0 in the opening break. Sooners lead it 14-0. 98 degrees is what it feels like here in Norman. Leslie McGaslin on the sideline. You get the honor of being on the sideline. <laughs> Talk about the attrition tonight. Yeah, do we call that an honor? Yeah. Yes, at least 100 degrees is the way it feels down here. It's pretty hot. They've said it was much hotter than it was last week, and you wonder about how that would feel to the South Dakota players who are usually practicing in high 60s back at home, but I talked to their head coach, Bob Nielsen, before the game, who said he wasn't worried about it. He said they practiced outside all preseason camp that they feel like it is more humid there and he did not think it would be a concern in this game guys we will have to wait let's take a look at our ford scoring drive it was impressive for the sooners again a very impressive first quarter that took them 10 plays to go 97 yards all with an eight yard touchdown reception the south dakota's dug themselves in a the big hole simmons Throws into the flat again, Cody Case, the outstanding receiver. Coming up on the other side of the end of the first quarter, Bob Stoops, former head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners, will be joining us. So you want to stay tuned to that. We've got 21 seconds left to play here in the opening quarter. Gary, you were talking about Oklahoma offensively already in this game. Yeah, over 218 yards, I think, is what the number is already in the first quarter for the for the Sooners offense. That's impressive, that number. Uh, and South Dakota's got to find a way to slow that machine down. Well, oh, they're not going to take a chance here at the end of the first. So for the second game in a row, South Dakota does not score in the opening quarter, but Oklahoma does. After one, the Sooners lead 14-0 on the other side of the break. Bob Stoops will be joining us. Oklahoma has a rich tradition here in Norman. And you can go back to Benny Owens, Bud Wilkinson, the legendary Barry Switzer. Outstanding coaches, and of course, Barry Switzer, not the only one to win national championships. Bob Stoops also did it. 29 bowl championships for the Oklahoma Sooners in their history. Seven Heisman Trophy winners, including the last two. 92 national award winners, including the Boz, Brian Bosworth. And 166 first-team All-Americans. And one of the great coaches in Oklahoma history, the winningest coach in that history. Bob Stoops is joining us right now. We'll join him right after this play as Simmons with a quick pass, almost picked up. And joining us now is Bob Stoops. I don't think I've ever seen you relaxed at the end of the first quarter. <laughs> I've never been relaxed. I don't know that I am yet. Uh, it, still, it still bothers me. I still come to the stadium early. I'm nervous. Now, you've got your sons playing on this football team, so you've got to be at these games. Yeah, I, uh, uh, Drake, my one son's playing, so I'm, I'm hoping uh, I get to see him tonight. But it's exciting. I love being here. But his twin brother is coaching. Kind of a student coach. Simmons, look out. Throws it up for grabs, and it's going to be knocked away, incomplete. So your sons are kind of getting stolen football. 
Yeah, well, I once coaching at Moore High School, and then uh, Drake is on the football team here as an inside receiver. So they're doing great. I'm proud of them. What has been the hardest part of this transition? All of it. Yeah, this has been your whole life. You're just, you're so, you know, engrossed in it all and so much emotion. And then to step away, I knew it was going to be hard. So right. I, I was aware of it. That doesn't mean it's wrong, but all of it's hard. But you've got a guy that took over for you that has handled everything and all the responsibilities, and he relies on you a lot. He was talking about that with us yesterday. Not afraid to pick up the phone and call you. That punt will go out at about the 32-yard line. And, and you've kind of been a mentor to Lincoln Riley. Well, to, to whatever degree. Link, Lincoln's such a good head coach, great offensive mind and play caller, but a great head coach. So he, he doesn't need me, but he, he is. We have a great friendship and, and trust. He knows I want nothing but the best for him and the team. So every now and then there's something he wants to discuss with someone. He got a he got a confidant in me for sure. Now, now you've got the senior class of this year. It was really kind of your first, your last class that you pulled in recruiting wise. What's it like for you to see these guys evolve? I'm proud of them. They they really we've had a couple of championships the last couple of years. So. That's what we do here at Oklahoma, win championships, and I'm proud that they continue to do that and chase national championships. I remember a number of years ago, you were telling a lot of us in the media, you said, eh, I may not write a book. I don't think there's a market for it. But on Tuesday, your book is coming out. No excuses, the making of a head coach. Hurts throws this up for grabs. That book, and I had a friend in Tulsa tell me, it's very insightful and it's also very touching. Why'd you write it? You know, I've had a coaches through the years from all different levels of football ask me how I did it, what's your path, and I thought, well, I might as well put it down, as well as the transition here from a struggling program, a, a proud tradition, right. but at the time I took it over, a really struggling down program, and how we rejuvenated and brought it back to life and into national prominence, how we put that together. But it's more than just football. It's Oklahoma now facing a second down to 10. Lavelle, first will keep it. Got a little bit of a seam. First down, close to the 50 and into Coyote territory. But it's not just about football because you've got a chapter that my friend told me was very touching. Talking about the Children's Hospital at OU Medicine. You used to go there on Thursdays. Was that tough to write and to relive? You probably are still involved in it, though. A lot of it is. I, I met some special spectators today before the game uh, that we see up in the Children's Hospital. So uh, it is. It was tough. There's so many great friendships and uh, beautiful kids that had such battles. Some have been able to overcome of them so many haven't so uh, a lot of great relationships though from those visits Hurts going down the middle incomplete but before we let him go Gary we got to ask him yeah what do you think of number one? Oh, I love him Jay Jalen Hurst is he's got a huge uh gonna have a huge year uh incredibly smart bright guy in the in the room in the uh meeting rooms you could tell every week he gets more and more comfortable in what yes. we're doing um, people forget, like, Kyler was here a few couple right. of years before he had to go on the field. You know, Jalen's just been here six months, maybe. So uh, I, I think he's doing great. And Lincoln does such a phenomenal job of playing to the quarterback strengths. He'll, he'll, he'll work with them in a great way. Second down and 10, ball on the 49-yard line. Hurts looking for the seam, finds it. Cuts inside, 30, 20, 10, finally knocked out of bounds. Sooners knocking on the door again. Bob, before we let you go, you're not out of coaching. You got the Dallas Renegades coming up. You have the draft in October. You start playing in February. It's that exciting for you. It's incredibly exciting. Uh, Vince McMahon and Oliver Luck, our bosses, really know what they're doing. We put it together the right way. As you guys would know, we have great TV contracts already set up, so I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be exciting. Well, we thank you, Coach. Thank you, Ryan. Some time for us, thank my you, Gary. Appreciate yeah, it. Good seeing you. Thank you. Don't forget, folks, you need to pick up the book on Tuesday again. No excuses for making of a head coach. Straight ahead, running. Touchdown, Oklahoma. 13-yard touchdown. Kennedy Brooks on the run. Well, just downhill power football. You see the big guys coming around. They, he gets behind them, and Kenny Brooks does the last five yards on his own. Breaking tackle. That's yak. That's yards after contact. Just a couple needed to get in that end zone. Sooners are rolling.
Kennedy Brooks first rushing touchdown of the season five plays 67 yards just over a minute and a half it took Oklahoma to score. And the extra point is good one more look at the touchdown. Kennedy Brooks the redshirt sophomore out of Mansfield Texas his first touchdown of 2019. <laughs> I'm Teddy Lehman, and as a former linebacker, I know how important takeaways are on the field. Takeaways can change the game at any time and are instrumental in winning. Now, thanks to Phlogistics Takeaways for Tops Partnership, takeaways are also game changers off the field. For every takeaway by the Sooners in Norman this year, Phlogistics is donating $1,500 to the Children's Hospital at OU Medicine for Pediatric Care. With nearly 50000 already donated, turnovers are now making a difference on and off the field. Oklahoma with 286 total yards. They lead it 21 nothing with 13.08 left to play in the opening half. Take a look at our Ford scoring drive. Brooks finished it off with a 13 yard touchdown run just over a minute and a half. It took Oklahoma to score. 46 total yards, Gary, for the Coyotes so far yeah. in this ballgame. Well, the only poor thing that's happened for Oklahoma are the penalties. They've had five penalties in this ballgame for 45 yards. Other than that, it's been a very good night, both offensively and defensively for Oklahoma. Kai Henry in the backfield got hurt in the Montana game for the Coyotes. In the second, didn't play in the second half. Simmons can run. He tucks it, got the first down over the 40. Up to the 45-yard line before Jordan Parker brings him down. 20-yard scamper for Simmons. Well, for him in, a, in his conference, in the valley as they call it, this is going to be exceptional play, and they're going to have to contend with this senior quarterback because he's a smart guy. He knows when to pull the ball down and run and get big yardage like he did there. He is a heady ball player. He's become a little more vocal, and the coaches like that. Swing it out to Henry. OU's defense just collides with them. Turner yell first to come up and finally wrap him up. But boy, I tell you what, Henry was not afraid to put the head down to get the extra yards. Yeah, and Turner yell's got to bring his head up. I don't want him to put his head down because this could be in part for him. Don't want to lower your head. Anybody watching this game, don't lower your head to come up and make that tackle. Turner yell almost hurt himself. Up over the 40, caught by Wesley Elidor, the redshirt freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And he is also considered one of the fastest guys. Picks up eight, good for the first down. They move the chains. Yeah, good drive here from South Dakota. They've got something working. Only their second first down of the ball game. Simmons able to draw Oklahoma offside. Free play. Far side incomplete. I tell you, that's just a good senior quarterback, the way he did that count. Had Oklahoma a little jumpy. Yeah, the record book here for this Coyote quarterback. He's done a nice job with his with his career there, and he's got a good tutelage too because Pitch Lapke, his offensive coordinator, won a national championship with Bob Nielsen as well. So they understand the yeah the you know how to get things done and, and winning. And Austin Simmons brings, I think, that type of mentality to that offense. Sixth penalty already on the Sooners. Now the Coyotes, first down and five. Henry stays in the backfield. Three wide receivers to the left. Ball on the 34. Henry gets hit immediately at the line of scrimmage. Gallimore makes up for the penalty and drops him. Yeah, I visited with Neville Gallimore at, at the media days, and boy, I really came away talking to him. Like he's very focused this season. He loves his defense. He wants to play with speed, penetration. He loves to get back there and make things great havoc for that offense. Simmons with a flick of the wrist to the tight end, Connor Herman, with the reception. Want to get back to Gallimore, Gary, and get your thoughts on this, because the defense decided to get a little bit lighter this season. They wanted to get a little bit faster. They're an average of almost 23 pounds a piece lighter than last year. Simmons throws in the flat. Caught. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, Gallimore goes just sub 300 pounds, and you know what? He actually is a 4 7 40 guy, so just think about that. 295, almost 25 yeah. pounds, and can run 4 7. That's amazing. Yet, you know, he's a guy that's going to need to be make physical plays in there because he's got to take care of these offensive, the offensive linemen he goes against. But they're going to run one gap system under this new, new defense, and that's what Gallimore, like you see in there, make a play and cause a fumble. Ball is loose, still loose. Oklahoma covers it up. Brendan Radley Hiles. First.
first turnover forced by Oklahoma this year. Well, we talk about Neville Gallimore, and guess what? Who steps up in the block into the play and do exactly that? Neville Gallimore from his defensive tackle spot gets inside and does a nice job of contact and knocks his ball away. Coming through there and bingo, right there, left hand on the football as he makes the tackle. That's what Alex Grinch has been preaching. Takeaways, 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 and Sooners come up with their first of the season. Coming into that drive, the Coyotes had 46 total yards. They had 47 yards on that drive, but come up empty-handed. It's a great football team. The, the style of defense was speed and takeaways and a powerful offense with Oklahoma, almost unstoppable. Trey Sermon and C.D. Lamb having an outstanding first half so far. Hurts drops plenty of time into the flat. Caught again, C.D. Lamb. Up over the 45 to the 47-yard line, his sixth reception of the ball game. Well, it's almost as simple as C.D., why don't you run to a spot, find an open area, and I'll just throw it to you. C.D. Lamb right there is exactly what he does. He goes between the safeties and nobody there, and he just finds, Jalen Hurts just finds him in an open area, and then it's run after catch. So, good job by Oklahoma with the chemistry between this quarterback and this Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, C.D. Lamb... His yak yards are better. He's more explosive this year. Sermon, right side, still able to get four on the play. Jake Matthew on the stop. Let's check in with Leslie down the sideline. Guys, just an interesting I heard Jalen Hurd say on the sidelines that the ground isn't dry and it's hard to get his cleats to stick. So I guess he feels like he's slipping a little bit, hard to get his footing, just something to look out for. The ground isn't dry probably from the sweat. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't rained here. Hurts. He is going to be wrapped up after the errant snap. That'll be back at the 40-yard line. Jake Matthew, good job for the Cayo loss of nine. But the snap from Creed Humphrey, who doesn't make mistakes, a little low. Yeah, right there in his shoe tops there. He had to go down and get that. And Jalen Hurts smartly picks that football up. But the negative play there for South Dakota, that's a good defensive play. There now brings up third and long here for the Sooners. You know, we, we kid about it, about the sweat, but Creed Humphrey doesn't make that kind of mistakes. Maybe there was a little bit of sweat on the ball or on the ground. Third straight drop. Here comes pressure again. Outstanding job by the Coyotes. Darren Greenfield, the senior out of Sheldon, Iowa. They all just speed. I think he actually gets a, does a good job of swimming inside here, taking the inside look at, at this. Watch the defensive end come in right there and do a twist. They do a me game. It's called me first and you second. So that's exactly what happened. And Oklahoma did not pick that up on the offensive line. Good line stunt that time by South Dakota. And their number one guy gets that sack. Well, he is a two-time All-American trying to become a three-time All-American. And the first person to be a three-time All-American, Gary Reasons, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Standing ovation. I think that's impressive, Gary. That's at the FCS 1AA level, which is what they're competing at. Still impressive. By the way, that's the first sack for Greenfield. Delay of game against Oklahoma. Another penalty. That's seven penalties for the Sooners in this ball game. That's the total they had against Houston last week. Well, you got the wind blowing behind him. This is a good south breeze. It's a warm night here. There's no doubt about that. Let's see if he can get one up in the jet stream and let it sail. He's much out with the kick. It's going to be a short kick. Cody Case will take it at the 42-yard line. And that's where the Coyotes will take over after the 33-yard punt. Kenneth Murray with two total tackles. His linebacker coach, Brian Odom, has told him to cut it loose. And Murray loves Brian Odom. He's amazing. I really I think of him as my biggest blessing because, you know, he, he comes in and he's just, he's always ready to work. Um, he's always, you know, that, you know, nobody's going to outwork me mentality. And, you know, I'm just grateful to have him in my corner, grateful to be able to go to him and ask him all the questions that I need to be able to ask and be able to get answers from him and able to learn every day from him. So, I mean, every day, um, you know, he's teaching me something every day. You know, we're in there, you know, we're learning. And, you know, you know, even when I'm not around him, it's like, you know, I just can't wait to get back around him, can't wait to get things going because he's just such a phenomenal guy. He's such a great coach. So, you know, I'm really happy to have him as my coach. Yeah, big impact. Ryan Odom on this defensive linebacker group as well as Alex Grinch. Those guys working together. They're trying to do something here and that changed the mentality defensively with the seniors, and they've done a good job. Simmons, nice job on the rush. Brought down by Wade, or White. 
Pick up a five on the play. How about this hit? Well, just kind of come downhill and bingo right there. That's what you do. Get that shoulder pad down and underneath the shoulder. Good physical play there from the center secondary. I like what Deshaun White says about Coach Odom. He says he's fierce. Simmons goes down and it is Deshaun White. Yeah, once again, number 23 steps up and makes a nice play here. So Deshaun White, big physical play previously, comes back now with a negative play in the backfield. Watch him come off the edge here on the right side, the top of your screen. And Deshaun White's going to make a play here once again in the backfield. Boom, right there. That sack unaccounted for in the rush contact there. Just kind of stepping up in the hole and making a nice play. Now coaches say he's instinctive. Coyotes 0 for 3 on third down. They need 13. Movement on the right side. No flag. Simmons running for his life again. Sets the feet and has to throw it away. Well, I think it's smart play by Austin Simmons doing what he does, and that is just kind of trying to buy some time there. But nobody downfield. He doesn't throw it downfield. Causing in a you know a potential turnover. It's okay to get the fourth yeah. and punt the ball. It's not it's not, it's not a bad thing. Especially when you have a pretty good punter who's done an outstanding job today. And Alex Grinch liking what he's seeing there with his defensive charges. They're playing pretty inspired football on that side of the ball. C.D. Lamb standing back at the 20. Third, three and out for the Coyotes. Lamb saying, I don't want it. Sooners will have the football, 6.47 left to play in the opening half. They have the lead at 21-0. In the opening quarter, C.D. Lamb, the 12th player in OU history to reach 100 yards in the opening quarter. What a great first half so far. He has an explosive half. Jalen Hurts just kind of spreading the ball around also, no doubt about that. Getting the ball out there. A little bit better by us. Jeremiah Hall getting that catch, and then Kennedy Brooks finishing one off here. So three scores, three different ways there for Oklahoma. But really... This has been a big play for him because you see the numbers that, that Oklahoma has. Over 300 yards total offense, no turnovers. They possess the ball more than twice, almost twice the time that uh, South Dakota has. They've been in control this entire ball game. And that's our AT&T first half summary. By the way, C.D. Land, 144 yards receiving. His career high is 167. He did that against Texas in the Big 12 championship game. Hurts just standing. Now flush. Heads to the sideline, wisely scampers out, maybe picks up a couple on the play. That's just a heads-up play by Jalen Hurts. You know, it, it amazed me when I saw the story, Gary, that he squats 500 pounds. <laughs> yeah, he's powerful. There's no doubt about that. He's got a great lower lower body, able to you know give him a good base to throw the football and run the football. And uh, kind of ward off uh, would-be tacklers, though, when he needs to get those tough yards. Tough yards. Kennedy Brooks now in the backfield. Three down linemen for the Coyotes. Brooks left side. Got the first down. Up over the 35-yard line. Pushed down at the 38-yard line. Pick up a 20 on the play. Well, when you watch Kennedy Brooks run, it looks effortless. And it's power, 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 and speed. And he holds his ball. Watch him holding his ball high and tight, high and tight, high and tight. That's what they teach these running backs so that you don't fumble that football. He just takes everything else under his control. Has an excellent run there that time for the Sooners. And another first down for Oklahoma. 12 first downs for the Sooners. Play action hurts time again. Now he's got a lot of green in front of him. Little juke step finally knocked down just over the 40, 45 yard line by Elijah Reed. Good coverage though by South Dakota, Gary. Yeah, but I think he's got to go go down the ball field because he's going to come down. He's going to do a little work room right here. Take a look at it, what Jalen sees. But he needs to throw this ball. It's a 50-50 ball. He's got his one of his receivers who's very lanky be able to throw that ball. He needed to throw it down the right seam, and he would have hash mark and had a, a big play in my estimation. Now they face second down and six. We hit the five-minute mark of quarter number two. Sooners in control from the beginning. Hurts throws in the flat pass caught. No gain. Bridges with his first reception as an Oklahoma Sooner. Now let's take a look at our OU Medicine leaderboard tonight. Yeah, well, this team has won a lot of football games over the years, and 
kind of the leader since 2000 with 10 win seasons. Oklahoma, you see the others behind them, but 16, <laughs> 16, 10 winning seasons since 2000 is amazing. Unbelievable, just the consistency. And once again, it started with Bob Stoops. So did the sellout streak here in Norman. And third down, first down, caught. Baskin with a reception. That is his first catch of the evening in the third of the year. The yeah, slot receiver comes across the field, opens himself up to Jalen Hurts, and just makes a nice, comfortable throw going down there and gets out of bounds and gets a big first down there for Oklahoma. Check that's his fourth reception of the year, and it covered 12 yards. Basquin, one of the great stories, getting a sixth year of eligibility, has fought through so many injuries, and to be able to play this final season is special to him. My goodness, it's going to be against Oklahoma. Ball start, number two, offense, five-yard penalty. Let's go first down. Leslie, what do you got for us? Well, guys, after the last series on offense, I saw Jalen Hurts come up to the offensive line, kind of clap his hands to give him a pep talk, and then in particular talking to Creed Humphrey. Then they came over and did a few snaps on the sidelines, so clearly some miscommunication there that they're trying to work out. That's a good report. You know, that's a great point because last year the offensive line had 156 starts. Coming into this year, they had only 12. All of those belong to Humphrey. Brooks. The, close to the first down, reaches for it. Let's see where they mark it. It'll be about a half a yard short. He picked up 13. Well, this is an excellent job of blocking, and it's a hat on a hat. Everyone's a strong response for somebody, and everyone gets their block, and that's why Kenny Brooks runs through the offensive line un untouched. Then he gets into the second, almost the third level of the defense before he is touched. That's an excellent job up front by the Sooner offensive line, as you talked about, Ron. Second down is short. Herbs keeps, looks, has room, stiff arms his way, and he will get the first down. Now they're going to mark it right at the 35-yard line. Jake Bakari Starling is the one who chased him out. Now this, this defense for South Dakota has got a new defensive coordinator, Travis Johansson. It's his first year there, and he's putting in a, a new style of play that they think is going to do well for them in, in the Valley Conference where, where they compete. And, you know, they're trying to get things right for themselves. He told us this week, he says, you know, it's not about Oklahoma. It's about us this week. All we want to do is be able to line up correctly, make sure that we do things the way we want to do them and make, this, make the improvements. They know they're not going to be able to line up with all the talent and speed that Oklahoma deploys out there. Well, they call it a positionless defense, but it's mainly a 3-4. We've got a timeout called. 2.23 left in the half. Cameron in Lawton, Oklahoma. South Dakota will get the ball to begin the second half. Fast, come, yeah. come with authority, and you know Kenneth Murray has the ability to be one of the best linebackers in the country because of his speed, his size. If he comes down, he'll make plays like that. He's going to have a heck of a year. South Dakota 0 for 4 on third down. They need 14. Three-man rush. They set up a little screen. This could go for six. Radley Hiles, touchdown, Oklahoma. Well, South Dakota tries to go misdirection to the right side of the field. They're near sideline and do a throwback little screen. But Riley, yeah, Riles does a good job of Bradley, Bradley Hiles does a nice job of coming underneath that throw, picking it off and taking it into the end zone. Brendan did a heck of a job of reading that, setting it up, and a score for the center defense. Sutherland for the extra point. Radley Hiles with his first career interception. It goes for 30. It goes for a touchdown. Oh, they like Brent, Brendan Radley Hiles, a midseason freshman All-American last year. And quickly, Oklahoma on the board again here in the third. 35-0. And the interception once again.
Brendan Radley Hiles with the first interception for a touchdown since 2017 when Parnell Motley was able to do it against Tulane. More importantly, Gary, second forced turnover by the Sooner defense. That's exactly what they like to have. Had the fumble caused by Gallimore, and then that one by Radley Hiles. That one for a touchdown. Kirk gets kicked inside the five. They're going to call the fair catch. Let's check in, see how Texas is doing. Here's Aaron Hardigan. Now, Austin Simmons at times, when he's gotten the time, Gary Reasons, he's done pretty well. Well, he has. He can distribute the ball. He's got an arm. He's can throw the ball very well. Let's see how they come out and respond after that turnover. Henry back in the backfield. Simmons, nothing doing. The speed of Oklahoma just slicing into the backfield. And again, LaRon Stokes coming in with his first tackle for the loss of the night. Well, LaRon Stokes is just going to move right here. Watch him take the ball, take the play right there to him. Comes off the block, and bingo, just makes the tackle. Quarterback has to get rid of that football. Talk to the coaches. When they talk about Stokes, they say, nice burst. Simmons, a lot of pressure, somehow gets rid of it. Allen with the catch. It won't be much of a game because Kenneth Murray was standing there again. You know, but this is a good play here for Austin Simmons, the quarterback, because he sees defensive pressure coming at him, and he has the calm, poise attitude to stand in the pocket, take a couple of steps, and get it out there to the outside, and he threw a good ball. Another third down situation for the Coyotes. They're 0 for 5 tonight. And they're going to get a penalty call, and they'll move them back even further. False start. And Brady 2. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Dakari Allen gets picked on that. And there is Alex Grinch, defensive coordinator. And coming to Oklahoma, he said he wanted to change the culture. And I think he's doing that. Yeah, he's got four simple things that he wants to do. He wants the defense to be sound, simple, repeatable, and adaptable. I think he's getting what he wants tonight. Third down. Looking pass. Caught. But the Oklahoma defense, nice job swarming. That'll keep them away from the first down marker. Nick Benito led the charge, the redshirt freshman out of Fort Lauderdale. You got a good aggressive pressure up here. Now the secondary, you've got to make plays. And, you know, these guys are coached fairly well. You look at uh, South Dakota, they're catching balls, they're making plays. And when you see the rally by the defense here to get them, get, hold them short of the line to gain. Brings up a fourth down in a punting situation. Now South Dakota now two of 16 on third down this season. Fifth punt of the game for the Coyotes. C.D. Lamb moves up to the 24. Cuts to his left. Turns on the speed. Look out. Up to the 50-yard line. C.D. Lamb on the return. That's why he is so explosive. 26 yards. Sooners will have it when we come back. Just saw the great uh, punt return by C.D. Lamb, but one of the greats in Oklahoma history, of course, is Antonio Perkins. Who could forget September 20th of 2003? He had 277 yards in punt returns versus UCLA. And Antonio Perkins is standing by now with Leslie. You are exactly right. The record breaker right here. Antonio, that was such a special game. They were just talking about it when you had the three punt returns for touchdowns. Of course, with UCLA coming up next weekend, have you done some reminiscing? Oh, absolutely. Every year it's always amazing that people remember who I am and remember what I've accomplished and what I've done on the football field. You bet. And, of course, a ton against UCLA. And then right before this, we saw C.D. Lamb with that punt return. Have you been impressed by him? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm waiting for him to break a good one. And the crowd's going around right now, but I think I think sometime this year he's going to score one, of course. And there's a touchdown. Do you think that he can break your record? I'm hoping no one breaks my record. The record I broke was 37 years old, so I'm hoping that as long as I'm living, no one breaks it. You've watched this OU team now. You said you go to a road trip once a year. How good do you think this team can be behind Jalen Hurts? I think it'll be really well. We do well with uh, Jalen Hurts, the quarterback. He's a really good runner. He's uh, working on his throwing, and I think that once the season goes along, he gels and gets used, used to these guys, and I think that we'll see what, what happens. I think Alabama, Clemson, they're going to be in the top two. I think we got a chance to sneak in there as well. All right. Thanks, Antonio. With that touchdown, that was not distracting at all, guys. He did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not sure if it's a touchdown. Jaden Hazel with the freshman out of Ellenwood, Georgia. They're going to have to review it. It looked like the ball came out of his hands. 
before he got into pay dirt. Well, they've got other ones. After review, the ball was fumbled at the three-yard line. The ball went outside of the pylon. Therefore, it's a forward fumble out of bounds. By rule, we're going to bring the ball back to the three-yard line. The first and goal, Oklahoma. OU, two plays of 40 yards or more today. They had five versus Houston. Trey Sermon now in the backfield. He will join Jalen Hurts. Sermon straight ahead. Leans forward. They're going to mark him down at about the one foot line. A bit of a submarine tackle by the defense there. Taking his legs out and almost kind of slid down the backside of him. And the Sooners will have second and goal from the one. Once again, Oklahoma has been perfect in the red zone so far this evening. Sermon trying to get the surge touchdown, Oklahoma. But we have a penalty flag on the far sideline. Oh my goodness. Offside. Big pass slider for the neutral zone. That penalty decline. Touchdown. Correction is giving the defense offside. <laughs> Well, it was not against Oklahoma, which Lincoln Riley had a big sigh of relief. Good surge, though, by that front line of Oklahoma. Yeah, power football here. Just come around and get in behind the big guy. Sermon does just that, and good blocking inside. Willis there, number 81, getting a good block inside. Swenson also. And that's a young man that had a big play inside the three-yard line for him. Caleb Sutherland. With the extra point on the hole from Connor McGinnis. But the big play goes to Jaden Hazelwood. 47 yards on the reception, set up the touchdown. On top of Dana Dimmel's UTEP Miners. Kansas State was mad today, huh? I'd say so. Put up a 50-plusser on, on somebody, and uh, I don't know how a coach, a coach Schneider would like that. No, I don't think he would either. Chris Klein, Kleiman, uh, the new head coach there, and uh, making a statement. Well, so far tonight, a little twist of fate because the Sooners are the ones who have dropped the anvil on the Coyotes, especially defensively. And again, Henry is stopped. The Oklahoma defense is doing everything you said that Coach Grinch wanted him to do. Well, you mentioned the anvil and the Coyotes. Well, you know it comes from where that comes from, but this is good defensive play. Again, young man who had the touchdown, Bradley Hines. Hiles does a good job of getting back there, making that play in the back for another negative play. Sixth tackle for a loss for the Sooners. Third down and 13 from the 22. Three crimson jerseys surround Brandy Baker. And he will go down. Baker with his first catch of 2019. Justin Broyles on the coverage. He picks up three. When I see that throw out there, what I see immediately are three red jerseys sprinting out there and be almost beating yeah. the ball out there. They actually overran the play, which allowed him to pick up a couple of yards. And again, South Dakota will have to kick it away. And how about the fact we've got a new kick returner in Drake Stoops? The son of Bob Stoops, the redshirt freshman out of Norman. And in the spring, the coaches could not stop talking about him, not because he was Bob's son, but because of the job he was doing. And I think Drake called a fair catch, and he did. He's got a great future here in Oklahoma, Drake. Uh, it looks like we're going to try to put somebody else out there at the quarterback position here for Oklahoma, possibly, and give need a little rest, I think, perhaps for Jalen Hurts. You know, he's done. 6-2, Richard freshman, 206 pounds out of Midway High School in Waco, Texas. 0-1 for 1 throwing the football against Houston. First real pass, short hop by Drake Stoops. And they're going to say, uh, it looked like it hopped. Yeah, the ball just did skip there right in front of Stoops, so Mordecai 0-1 for 1 on that first throw. You know, he, he kind of struggled in the spring game, Tanner Mordecai, but he had to cut him some slack because teams were split up and there were injuries and he didn't practice with those guys per se. 
So a lot of people were criticizing him, but I thought that was unfair criticism. Mordecai's a good quarterback. Hands off right side. Stevenson up over the 45, gets the first down. Ramondre Stevenson, the junior out of Las Vegas. 41 yards last week, 14 on that run. Yeah, a little bit of a mixed bag offensive line-wise. Got a couple of starters, a couple of second-team players on the offensive line, but Stevenson gets in behind and does a nice job of going north and south of that football, which is what you want with your running backs anytime they're in the ballgame. Ball now on the 46. Mordecai looks left. Throws over the middle, wide open, caught inside the 30-yard line. A.D. Miller. His second reception of the year. Boy, was he open, though. Well, well, the protection was really the key here. So you look at all the time that the quarterback has. Mordecai just finds the receiver as he comes open in the middle of the field. It's two deep safeties, and they're both covering up a speedy receiver on the outside. The middle of the field wide open, and they exploit it. 39 yards out of the reception for A.D. Miller. That's the longest of his career. Mordecai also moving the football. Play action over the middle, caught inside the five, reaching for the end zone, touchdown. Hazelwood finally gets one. But you got to give Ramondre Stevenson a lot of credit for the block. Well, play action pass here, gets that ball down the field, so definitely good opportunity here for the Sooner team to do different things, run the football, throw the football. Play action pass and Hazelwood pays that one off with a with a touchdown. Negated earlier on the three on the three yard line. I think it's his touchdown tonight. Boy, he does, and that's his first collegiate touchdown. First of many is Sutherland out for the extra point. Sutherland getting a workout. We mentioned earlier he missed a couple of field goals. Lincoln Riley said I shouldn't have had him try that one that was almost 50 yards last week. Had a little bit of jitters, but he settled down tonight. Of course, all these extra points. And he stays perfect. Now, this is a good throw right over the middle to Hazelwood and stretching out. Good job. His knees are off the ground. Looks clearly to that. And have a look at it from right in the end zone coming right at us. And Jalen Hurts likes what he saw from the freshman. And South Dakota now, they just probably want to start working on things that will help their game next week. And they'll bring it out. Energy, that's a good place to start. I mean, he's a, he's a highly competitive, highly energetic guy. Um, He's a mentality first guy, you know, which that was probably the number one thing for me, even more important than what scheme we would be running as somebody that that values the mentality um, that you instill in your players as much as I did. And, and uh, Alex certainly does. And then combine that with a guy that I think is very innovative scheme wise, uh, does a great job communicating to the coaches and to the players. And it was just a great fit. Well, Alex Grinch has great pedigree, big hit right at the 29-yard line. But Alex Grinch, great pedigree. His uncle, Gary Pinkle, former Missouri coach. And, and you and I have known Gary a long time. I remember when he took the job from Toledo and went to Missouri. He stressed fundamentals. He stressed details. But I can't say details enough. And that's Alex's M.O. I think Alex Grinch is a, is a perfect fit for this team because he brings that energy, he brings that enthusiasm, but he brings structure. The structure to succeed is to see a pass completed here in front of the center defense for a first down. But more on Alex, it, I think that what he does, he, teaching his, his defense, one of the key things is you have to be a finisher. And what I mean right. by a finisher is just you have to do things like takeaways. A takeaway, he says, is a finish to a play. Another big play here for... South Dakota because they're continuing to move the football. But finishing plays is, is critical. And, you know, that's what he's trying to get across to all of his defensive players. Be able to finish plays, finish drives. A turnover is a takeaway, which is a finish to a play. 
that's what he's trying to get the mentality to finish plays and to be an elite defense if you have to be if you're an elite defense to be good you have to finish plays that was a pitch by greenshaw and uh, leslie one of the things alex does is he has a way of getting his players up before they even leave the hotel to go to the game yeah, you're exactly right, Ron. I asked him, like, what is one thing that you've done at every stop that you've been at? And one of those things is a run-through, not a walk-through. And it's on game day. It's about three hours before the game. They're not worried about tiring out his defense. He said it's designed to be the most intense 15 minutes of the week. He says it sets the tone for the game. And so far, the guys have embraced it here at Oklahoma, Ron. Well, he's looking. Thank you, Leslie. Good job on that. Uh, they're, they're looking because it may be pass interference or a hold against Oklahoma. You know, that was the first time I'd ever heard of that type of a mentality. Yeah, I know. On, on a Holding. Friday. Number 25, defense, defense. on an eligible receiver. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Ninth penalty. That goes on Justin Broyles. He just got tangled up there in the secondary, deep in the secondary. We'll see there. Get his hands on him. Watch on the 30-yard line. There you go. He's just holding. That's what the penalty is called because he inhibits him to run down the field. Alex Grinch also coaches the safeties, which is the position of Royals. I'm sure Justin will hear about that. Levi Falk with his first catch of the ball game. Yeah, just keep, keep firing and keep swinging. That's what they're doing. Why not? South Dakota getting a good drive together here. Clint on the run play maybe gets a yard. As we close in on six minutes to play in quarter number three, Brian Mead on the stop for Oklahoma. One of the things Lincoln Riley talked about was being consistent. And, you know, last week against Houston late in the game, they got, ahead, got a little bit of separation. And they felt that they had a little bit of a letdown defensively. Right. Points on the board against that defense. And that's something they want to work to get work to, to improve upon. Simmons has time, goes for the touchdown, passes it, caught. Touchdown, Coyotes, 23 yards for the uh, the conference season, just giving their future opponents something to think about. And the extra point is good. Numbers were a little wrong. Trey Brown, Michael Jones set to receive the kick. And they're just going to let it go off to the side, and the Sooners will have it. Hilton. Mark Collins Sr. is with his son Marco. They're over at Kansas with an official visit today, watching their ball. Not too shabby. So a little good lineage there of defensive backs in the Collins family. Stevenson breaks through. It's a foot race to the 30, 20, 10. Dives for the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. yards at Serena's College, the junior college. He was considered a four-star recruit, the number one junior college running back. He goes 75 on that scamper. Well, good size. 236 pounder running away from the defense, and that top end speed was pretty good, big fella. Eighth sooner to score tonight. And the extra point again by Sutherland, the redshirt sophomore out of Keller, Texas, gateway to Trophy Club. And it is good. Inside joke. 56 to 7. South Dakota goes on a 75-yard drive. They score. The Sooners answer big time, Gary Reason. Now there's no doubt about it. You just hand it off inside and there's a hole there, but this is exploited by the speed of Demondre. He just takes it right through there, breaks one tackle, and he's off to the races. And you're thinking a big fellow like this might be able to be caught by these defensive backs. Not really. He's got the gas, and he can get there and takes it into the end zone. That's an excellent run by the big fellow. 583 total yards for Oklahoma, 313 passing, 270 rushing. That's a heck of a stretch, though, by Ramonde, Ramondre Stevenson. When I walked away, and I remember Charles Davis, who does the NFL on Fox, looked at me and goes, did you understand a word he said? <laughs> 
Simmons gets flushed out of the pocket. He's got some running room up over the 30 to the 35-yard line before Jordan Parker shoves him out, gain of 15. You know, the thing about this South Dakota team is, you know, they've got no quit in them. They're, they're standing up against oh, yeah. Oklahoma team, and they come right back, and they're going to do what they do, and that's what, that's what they do. And Austin Simmons, I think he's very poised back there, and he's doing a good job of executing this offense. You know, this is a talented offense. They've got six or seven guys that are wide receivers that can make big catches. Here is Brooks. He'll be standing stood up at the line of scrimmage by Woody Washington. Yeah, we didn't talk about Dakari Allen a whole lot tonight, but he's a leader player. Wide receiver, you know, their leading receiver coming back from a year ago, but can really stretch the field. Big target to throw to. Been covered up most of the night here by the Sooners. Nine of their top ten wide receivers from last year are back. Into the flat to Baker. Got the first down up to midfield and crosses midfield. Randy Baker coming down with a reception, his second of the night and second of the year. Chance Sylvie comes up with a stop. And the protection here has been pretty decent here. Late in this ball game by the South Dakota offensive line, the defensive front not been able to get off the blocks and make the pressure. It's good tap on the outside. Brooks, no gain. Once again, the last time they had the ball, the Coyotes with 75 yards. Putting a couple yards out on this drive, too. He lost one of that. South Dakota now with 223 total yards. They'll go with three wide receivers to the right. Simmons looks right down the middle. Here comes the pressure, gets away from it. Goes to the outside, takes a big hit at the 40-yard line, a yard short of it. First down. Sylvie again coming up on the stop after a pickup of 10. And pressure all around him. He felt the little void there inside, and he did a nice job of exploiting it, getting a pretty good game there. Simmons about a, a yard shy. That first down marker. Well, the offensive line did a pretty good job versus Montana, and considering you have two redshirt freshmen starting and a converted tight end. Not bad. They're facing third down, yet to complete one out of seven tries. And it looks like it'll stay that way. Brooks stoned right at the 40. In a flag late. Yeah, late flag. And there's a flag on the play. And we'll listen in. After the play was over, on sportsmanlike conduct, number 21, defense. 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot. Automatic first down. That's number 21. First, that's forced by conduct foul for the game. That'll be on Ryan Jones. Tenth penalty on Oklahoma tonight for 85 yards. You know, it's forced by conduct fouls are something that coaches do not like. They don't like that. Players got to play within the context exactly. of the rules of the game, and there's no reason to have those types of penalties enforced against you. You know, when a play's over, let it be over. Don't give your opponent another opportunity. First and ten now at the 25 for the Coyotes. Simmons looks, fires, caught inside the 20, inside the 10. Again, Cody Case. What a night Case is having. His seventh reception to cover 16 and another penalty play. Holding yeah. on the 66. Six. Offense. Offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. Isaac Herbs getting that, uh, that hold there. Cody Case. Another catch there, not going to count, but he had 11 receptions a week ago, so picking right up where he left off. Right here is going to get to see the hold outside. Arm goes up underneath and pushes down from the backside. That's what they see. Isaac Hervis, the redshirt freshman of Urbandale, Iowa. First and 20 from the 35. Again to Case. Inside the 30 before brought down by Sylvie picked up six. I tell you case is like He kind of reminds me of a Cole Beasley kind of receiver. Yeah, very much so kind of like that He's coming up a little little game there because uh, got his legs twisted up. Hopefully he can walk that off well, That was the problem as we mentioned last year the hamstring with case Second down Simmons goes deep Incomplete 
Good coverage as Parnell Motley was running step for step with Paul. That's not good. Sideline, see if uh, getting back out there. Case is averaging 11.3 yards every reception he's had tonight. Yeah, big third down here. You got to get something here. You got to make this positive. And third and 14. Clear it out right side. Sooners chasing. Good job defensively. They surround Henry with about eight Oklahoma jerseys led by Levi Draper. And they'll stay over on third down. Got a, young, a lot of young guys in the ballgame here trying to get some experience, but also show the enthusiasm that they can bring to this game. And that's kind of why you see the high intensity guys out there. You know, they play a lot against each other in practice. And now you get a chance to play in the games. You're seeing some young Sooners in there being a little feisty. And the Coyotes will go for it on fourth down. They were one of three last week. Simmons looks. He wants it all. Got a man. Did he stay in bounds? Well, he caught the football. Did he have control no. of it while he was in bounds? We'll see. The side judge there was right there in front of the of him. So, I'm not sure. We'll have to take a look at this on the replay. Well, Caleb Vanderish did a good job, but the officials ruled him out. He was wide open. Actually, we had a, I think we had a defender fall down here in front. You see, was he in the bound? In, that's going to be a touchdown, guys. He had his foot down while he had possession of the ball. That looks like he's on the line there. No, his left foot was down, Ron, when he touched the football initially. Watch this. One, two, three. His left foot is down, catches the football. I think we're probably going to have this reverse. This will be a touchdown. That left foot is down in the end zone. He has possession with his hands. I think he's pulling the ball back while he... Uh, has his foot down. After so. review, the receiver's left foot was in the end zone with possession of the football. Therefore, it's a touchdown, South Dakota. All right. Moment, and when they land back in Vermillion, or back in South Dakota, Sioux Falls, I guess it would be. People in this area might uh, recognize that Van Der Esch name as uh, one with the Dallas Cowboys. Not a family member, not a cousin. <laughs> So Oklahoma takes over, first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Ramondre Stevenson back in the backfield again, joining Tanner Mordecai. Stevenson showing the power, gets his way up to the 30. He's earning himself more playing time in the next few weeks. Well, when I look at him, I see him as a power runner, able to break tackles and break through the line of scrimmage. Didn't really expect to see him break one off as a long run the way he did previously, so... He's got a little more gas in the tank than I would have given him credit for. Once again, T.J. Pledger not playing tonight because of injury. They get it off to Derek Stoops. He gets close to the 50-yard line. He had two receptions last season. He gets one tonight. Well, he just has to get his helmet pulled off, so Drake has to step on the sideline. Drake Stoops catches the ball, pulls it in, and gets everything readjusted there. Final 10 seconds of the quarter, and I have a funny feeling Tanner Mordecai might let it just go down, and he will. The Tanner Mordecai, two of three, throwing the football 54 yards. But Stevenson with the big run in that third quarter. Stevenson with a 75-yard touchdown run. We will head to the final 15 minutes. South Dakota's put up a fight, but they trail 56-14. Welcome back to Norman, Oklahoma, along with Gary Reasons, Lawson McCaskill, and I'm Rob Kula. Good to have you with us tonight. Sooners impressive, 56-14, but I don't think any defensive coordinator is happy in the third quarter. Combined 42 points, 16 first downs, 370 combined yards. Stevenson leans forward, gets into Coyote territory, pick up six. So I think the defensive coordinators are probably going, we're just going to show third quarter tape on Monday. <laughs> that might be the case. And you know what? This is when you're learning about your players. You know, defensively, you're not having your starters in there, and you're going to have 
different things occur, but you've got to execute, and that's what you're trying to see, what these guys do under fire when it's live tackling all the time and things that you have to accomplish. Or the guy looks left, now he's got to scramble. Goes to the safety valve, dumps it off inside the 40 to Stevenson. Stevenson's first reception is an Oklahoma Sooner, picked up a couple. And it wasn't any, third down and four here. Wasn't any separation from the Sooner receivers that time in the South Dakota secondary because he had to drop that ball down, as you said, Ron, and you just line up and go another down here. So third and short. Oklahoma, this is only the sixth time they faced third down. They've been converted on the previous three. They need two. Bridges can't hold on to it. That was good force that time by Corey Font Jr. Watch number 20 come up here and force this play. Good job of using his body and disrupting him. Corey Font coming in there and playing well. I think Trey Jean wanted to run the foot run before he got the football on his meat hooks. Sooners are going to go for it on fourth down and two. This will be the first time they've done that this season. Good for the first down. Again, Stevenson picks up four. Now, a lot of people are probably saying, you got a big lead, 56-14. Why did Oklahoma go for it on fourth down? Ah, it's just a run your play, run your offense. I don't see anything wrong with that. If you grind out the first down, that's a good thing. If not, you've got an offense that really, you know, hasn't had a whole lot of success against this defense tonight. I agree with you 100%. I remember Mac Brown telling me, you know, you got to give those second and third teamers some reps, and we don't want to do anything differently. We want to run our offense, but it's a big lead. Austin Stogner, the big tight end, the freshman out of Plano, Texas, was the number two tight end prospect in the country coming out of high school. And when you see the ball come out of Tanner's hand, you can see the zip that he throws the football. And so that, that's really pleasing to the coaches to be able to get him to release that football throw it accurately in, in, the, in game conditions. Stogner with his first collegiate catch. They need six for the first down. Stevenson this time is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Kind of slow to get up, and he is holding on to it. Is it his hand? Yeah, it's holding on to a finger or hand. And the glove's going to come off. Hmm. Scott Anderson, the longtime trainer on the left there, going to quickly take a look at him. There's his little thumb area there. Hopefully it's just uh, yeah. mildly, lightly sprained, if anything. On third down, Mordecai goes over the middle. Caught inside the 15 to the 10, Theo Weiss. Catch first collegiate touchdown, ninth sooner to score. Well, we talked about Jaden Hazelwood and Trajan Bridges just a little bit, but this one on the other side, Theo Weiss, just as talented, 6'3, 201 pounder, a freshman out of Allen High School in North Texas. Brings a nice ball into the end zone. Kind of struggled and fought his way in there. Touchdown for uh, Mr. Mordecai. 37 yards on the catch. And Theo Weiss, high school All-American, over 1,000 yards receiving in his high school career. Point. Sooners now 62 14. Didn't take them long here in quarter number four. Sutherland again for the extra point. Getting a workout. He's going to have to spend some time in the tough club. Touchdown again. Tanner Mordecai rifling the pass for his second touchdown of the evening. Sooners are rolling.
Seven of eight Oklahoma scoring drives have been 60 or more yards. Let's take a look at the last one from the all 22. Well, we got Theo Weiss here. He's going to come down and run out, go inside, and just look at the, the protection is good, and then the strike here from Tanner Mordecai. Gets separation in the yards after contact. Right there, he breaks that tackle, never stops effort, 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 getting that ball into the end zone, and that's a heck of a job by Theo Weiss. i tell you what, same high school as a guy named Murray who played quarterback here. Fourth scoring drive, nine plays, 75 yards, less than four minutes. Deep kick, five yards deep. Let's check in with Leslie McCaslin, who Coach Riley had a little special day this week. Yes, he did on Thursday. You guys mentioned earlier it was his birthday, only 36 years old. And, of course, he's accomplished a lot in his very young career so far, 25 and 4 in his first two years here at Oklahoma. And I asked him if he, you know, takes a chance on his birthdays to kind of sit back and reflect as to where he is. And he said, you know, I think you do some. He said, I didn't know where I'd be, but I always believe do good things in my profession he said i'd be lying though if i thought i'd be here he calls it a crazy opportunities that have happened since 2003 he said he was way too young for every one of them and it's still kind of crazy just to walk into you know his office and the stadium and believe that he's made it here guys just 36 years old and obviously a, a very bright future ahead of him in coaching oh i tell you he's so humble of everything he does uh, my favorite part of our conversation leslie and you'll appreciate that met your son hunter tonight by the way uh daughter sloan and stella bought him some nerf toys so they could have little nerf fights <laughs> that was his birthday present i think that's great i think every parent can appreciate that yeah, and family, I think, is, is really what it's all about here. You know, Bob Stoops created the culture, and I think that Lincoln Riley has fit right in with that culture and continued that. And he's putting his spin on things. Obviously, this offense, as we see it, the pass come down there. Was it picked off in defense? Yes, it was. Intercepted. Jaden Davis, the freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, OU's third forced turnover. Yeah, and that's one of the things that the Lincoln Raleigh wanted to turn around, and that is the ability to take the ball away as a defender. They didn't get a lot of those last year, but right here, good job, go up, compete for the football, two hands on the football. That is a catch. I think he keeps it off under his legs, off the ground. I think it's going to be ruled a completion to the defensive back. In, no, it's going to be an interception here for uh, for Oklahoma. And, hey, that's the third one tonight, third third uh, turnover. So he's got to be pleased with that. He's got. They had six interceptions last year. The Sooners did, but they forced three turnovers tonight after no turnovers in the Houston game. Yeah, scoring on defense is, is you know they did that once with. With Brendan running that interception back. Now, along with that, they've got seven tackles for a loss and a couple of sacks. So the defense continues to make improvement, what Gary talked about at the top of the show. Spencer Rattler has come into the ball game, the outstanding five-star quarterback out of Phoenix, Arizona, six foot 197, dumps it off into the flat to Weiss. That's a combination we may be talking about in the in the future. Yeah, and you know what's interesting here is as soon as he comes in, the fans all get, get excited. Yeah. And when when the ball comes out of his hand, you can see what is really special about this young man. He has the ability to flip the field, change the field with his arm. He can throw the ball as hard as he likes, as fast as he likes. He's got all the tools as a thrower. He definitely has that, and he's a quick grasp of the offense. This time he's just going to hand off left side. Good game. Pick up a five on the play. Marcus Major. And they're going to page two of the flip card already. Now, I want to go back to Tanner Mordecai. Bob Steifel, our producer, and I, and we were at practice on Thursday, and we're watching him throw, and we both looked at each other and said, wow. And we went to Lincoln and, and said, that's impressive. And Lincoln goes, this kid's going to be really good. Yeah, Spencer, you know, he's got an arm. You see the ball throwing right there. Bing, bang, bang. He can get that ball out. No doubt about that. And a little mustard out it to Austin Stockner coming up with the catch. That is Stockner's second reception. He picks up 11. And that'll be a first down for Oklahoma. 
And it was interesting, the quarterbacks at Oklahoma over the last several years and even this year, a little bit different in sizes. You know, the you got the size of, of Baker Mayfield, which you see uh, Rattler. Rattler taking it down to run a little bit. Baker Mayfield, a little, little bit of a thicker body, not a really tall guy. Obviously, uh, Kyler Murray, not very tall in stature, but he could run and really move. Good job here by Rattler, running his skill a little bit. And then Rattler's about six foot, you know, he's about yeah. a pounder. And, Jalen Hurts, he's kind of the kind of the, the wild card here, the alpha who's you know six two, six three. If you look at him, he's two hundred and twenty-five, thirty-five pounds. He's big, strong, he's got all the attributes. And you know, I don't think there's one physical type quarterback that, that uh, Lincoln Riley likes to work with, or he's he's not you know predisposed as far as what a body size he wants. He's been able to use different size players and types of quarterbacks to get the results. They all have different skill sets, and he just utilizes what those strengths are. That was Marcus Major on the carry, the freshman out of Oklahoma City Millwood High School. Millwood, an outstanding school. So getting back to Rattler, he threw for over 11,000 yards in his high school career. But get this, 116 passing touchdowns. He keeps it. Bounces to the outside, shows some speed. Got the first down, and unfreshman life, he heads to the second line. Yeah, he's got some wheels. You see him kind of dart inside. Everybody kind of goes inside. When you take a look at this, you'll see what I'm talking about. He's going to come out here and pump inside, but then get quickly to the outside. And good job there. He fakes it inside, then the defender goes in there, and he goes around. So good job playing a little decoy there as he steps out of bounds. Well, he also ran for over 1,000 yards in his high school career, 14 rushing touchdowns, was recruited by Alabama, Texas, Notre Dame, and USC. He was the number one rated high school quarterback. And the Sooners got him. Now Rattler looks right, throws first down catch. Inside the 30, here goes Bridges. Inside the 15, all starting with the arm of Spencer Rattler. Uh, Trajan Bridges does a good job of coming back for the football and then running after the catch. We talked about him earlier as one of the special freshman receivers here on this squad. And you know what? The four-game rule that is in college football, I absolutely love it because it gives these young players an ability to get some playing time in the games and not necessarily burn a complete year. Sometimes these players may not be need ready or needed to play a full season for you. But they certainly, you certainly want to give them some oh, experience yeah. and have them potentially available to you later in the season. Bridges out of Carrollton, Texas. Hand off left side, Major again. It's maybe three on the play. Bridges, though, is one of those guys. He's 6'1", 187. Potential of growing even more. But the coaches were telling us they like him because he can find ways to catch the football. Yeah, they're just talented. They're youthful. They, they've got a lot of speed amongst that group, and he's one of those talented ones as well. And, you know, sky's the limit here for these guys, and it's just going to keep getting better and better with the, with the skills and the depth that they have. Tenth play of this drive for the Sooners, second down and seven. Rattler pulls it down, hands it off to Majors again. Doesn't get much, maybe a yard. Interesting defensive front there that time from, from South Dakota. They've done this several times tonight. They actually, what I call them, deuce. They bring their defensive end all the way down over the guard. There's nobody over the outside of the guard and the defensive end. It actually looks void there. So when you're up there as a quarterback and you're seeing it, I'll, sh I'll show you what, the, what I'm talking about. When they get lined up here, they're not covering that right offensive tackle. They sometimes they leave him out in space all by himself. So kind of strange. But then the, the offense just kind of runs the play that they choose. Sooner six of nine on third down. They need nine. Rattler rifles, throws, touchdown, Oklahoma. Trajan Bridges. Ten different Sooners have scored. Bridges gets his first collegiate TD. Well, that's a couple of names that I think you're going to hear potentially in the future. Rattler to Bridges many, many times over because... Just a good chemistry here. A couple of young guys getting to play together. They play together in practice, and they have a lot of chemistry, as I just mentioned. And right there in the void area, the defense in the end zone, Bridges comes down with the touchdown. I mean, think about it. We've seen Bridges. We've seen Weiss. We've seen Hazelwood. C.D. Lamb got most of all of his catches in the first half. That's a wealth of riches at wide receiver for Oklahoma. And then you got Charleston Rambo with great speed. Exactly. There's no doubt about it. And A.D. Miller as well. You had them out there. So 
There's a lot of talent in this wide receiver court from, from Oklahoma. It may be the best in the country. Spencer Rattler, third quarterback to play for Oklahoma, third quarterback to throw a touchdown pass. A perfect four of four. Sooners lead it 70 to 14. Second half has been impressive for the Oklahoma Sooners, offensively and defensively, Gary. Yeah, Burnley Ratley Hiles does a nice job there coming underneath that. Get that touchdown for the defense. And guess what? The offense, they're still continuing to bang. Dick Sermon gets it into the end zone. And Tanner Mordecai with a strike there inside. Stretching it out there on the end zone. Hazelwood gets his touchdown. Stevenson, the big fella, does a good job of running that ball down the field and getting in the end zone. That big arm that he has with Weiss bringing this down to the goal line. Impressive second half here overall with all the players that Oklahoma has put out there quarterback-wise. And number eight doesn't, doesn't disappoint them at all. Trajan Bridges gets his touchdown. Oklahoma has scored 70 points for the first time since, <laughs> I'm telling you. Tyler Segalas is in at quarterback now as Ben Clint with a run. Segalas, the junior out of Arlington Heights, Illinois, had late game snaps over the last two years. 6'2", 215 pounds. Last year, threw only five passes total. Good tackle of the time by Brian Mead, the inside linebacker, getting some time here late in this ball game. Inside out on that play, making a tackle. And Segalas trying to get something going. Once again, they got their conference season coming up. And it's not an easy one. They're going to have an offside penalty here on the Sooners. Free play. And a pickoff intercepted. Picked off by Davis. Davis is going to trot into the end zone. The defensive offside is going to negate that. Right. That's the 11th penalty against Oklahoma. But a costly one because it would have been a pick six. Offside, number 97, defense, five-yard penalty from the previous spot, still second down. The Marquez Overton, you might as well start running now because you'll be doing it very early tomorrow morning. That's Corey Roberson there getting in a little quickly. off again to Clett. That'd be a face mask there. And he kept going. It will be a face mask up to the 50-yard line and tack on even more. Yeah, right at just when he crosses line of scrimmage, a defender comes in and grabs that face mask. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 26. Defense. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic. First down. Caleb Murphy's would have grabbed it. Mm. Oklahoma, 100 yards in penalties. They may have been crittled. Had a couple of guys grabbing them. So now the ball is going to be placed all the way up to about the 45-yard line, just shy of it, with 4.36 to play. Well, South Dakota doing a good job of working the clock. Yeah, they got first and ten. What? Nothing doing. Oklahoma with 14 in the first, 14 in the second, 28 in the third, 14 in the fourth. You know, you talk about the schedule for the Coyotes of South Dakota. Doesn't get any easier. They've already played number 23, Montana, playing the Sooners. And look at the rest of the ranked teams they've got to face this season. Yeah, you look down there at North Dakota State, you know, obviously the, the team in the FCS level, multiple national championships, and that's the team to beat in that Missouri Valley Conference, and there's a lot of great teams up there. They got their hands full, but they like the team they've got this year. They believe it's going to be a good team. Randy Baker with the catch. Baker's got three receptions this evening. That one covered four yards. And the clock continues to run. Oklahoma, on the other hand, 
They get to go to UCLA next week, looking to extend their road winning streak to 21 games. That would tie the second longest streak nationally post-World War II era. So you won 25 under Bud Wilkinson. That would be impressive. Third down and five, looking for their first conversion, and it's going to be close. Complete to Wesley Elador. Ron, you mentioned that uh, the Sooners go out to UCLA next week, and UCLA's dropped their first couple of ball games. They scored 14 points each ball game the last couple of weeks, losing here again today, and we see the tail end of this play here in this tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Here they've got the first down. They award it to him. One of ten now on third. And the clock running inside of 2.30. Austin Simmons finished his evening 25 of 34 for 244 yards. Clint becoming the workhorse, led the team last year in yards per carry. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule brought to you by Phillips 66. I mentioned UCLA, then they've got that open week Oklahoma does before they start conference play with Texas Tech. And you always got to circle that one there in, yeah. in, in Dallas. Texas. Uh, Big ball game this year. Both Oklahoma and and uh, Texas pick one two in the conference preseason. Now you have to wonder also what kind of West Virginia team will they be facing? West Virginia getting whacked today. Deep, deep in the flat, Sagalas completing the pass. I think Neil Brown's got his work cut out for him with so West too. Virginia. So. Carter Cutchell was on the reception. And that stopped the clock with 132. Texas, by the way, closed the gap. It's 23-14 now with LSU. Just over five minutes to play. Penalty flags are thrown. That's a third quarter score. Ball start. Number 78. Offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. There haven't been a lot of penalties on South Dakota. They've kept, they played a pretty clean ball game. Well, that's their seventh. 19 penalties between the two teams. And that'll bring up a third down and six. Gallus throws it into the flat. Baker having a nice game tonight. And he picked up five on the play. That'll be short of the first down by a body yard. And they're going to go for it with 115 to play in the ball game. Second time tonight they've done that. And the Sooner defense stops him again. Losing a yard on the play. Great penetration by Dylan Famaatu. Yeah, and McKinney as well back there, also getting a penetration in the in the backfield and making that negative play. Eighth tackle for a loss for that Sooner defense. Sooner defense has done a pretty good job tonight for the most part, stuffing the Coyotes on fourth down. 67 seconds left to play. Final 107 to play here in Norman, Oklahoma. The Sooners have been impressive offensively. 734 total yards. Tanner Mordecai playing quarterback. Also Spencer Rattler playing quarterback. Marcus Major getting some time at running back. C.D. Lamb, a big game tonight. Six catches, 144 yards, including a 48-yarder and a touchdown. Big numbers by this Oklahoma offense, no doubt about it. They have weapons. They have a lot of players that are going to be able to add to the mix to make this an explosive team. They've been that for several years. Obviously, the arrival of Lincoln Riley in 2015 is, has paid off. Paid off in a big way with this offense. Of course, but they have given up 348 yards. Offense to the Coyotes. Not something they were hoping for. But offensively, pretty good job by the Sooners. 
They're going to win it. Time's going to be ticking down. 70 to 14 is going to be the final. First time since they hung 70 on somebody since playing North Texas. Let's take our OU Extended Campus play of the game. And there are a lot to choose from, but this is one of our favorites. Yeah, Tanner Mordecai does a nice job of getting the ball out there to Theo Weiss, and his effort and ability after the catch is impressive. Gets it ball into the end zone. That's just continuing to, to have a will over the defense. I'm getting this ball in the end zone, folks. You're not stopping me, and he takes it right in there. So excellent job by that young man, and a good strike by the quarterback. And Leslie standing by with Lincoln Riley. Thanks, guys. Well, Coach, let's talk about your offense for 70 points for the first time since 2007. Do you like the way Jalen engineered the offense? Yeah, he played pretty well. Uh, you know, did a good job for us in the first quarter, first quarter, really all first half. Threw the ball really well. Obviously, the penalties, again, were disappointing really throughout the game. But got to play a lot of guys. A lot of guys kind of got their, their first experience of playing out here, and we'll, we'll uh, look to grow from it. Yeah, second game, too, with this new-look defense. Were you impressed on that side? With, at least for your first team, didn't really give up a touchdown. No, they didn't, and, and we got we got takeaways. You know, that's that's our that's our deal. You know, it's speed D, and we want to get takeaways. We want to be the best takeaway team in the country. So uh, did a lot better getting the ball out, gave up a couple there late that we need to do better, but uh, I think we took some steps. All right, good luck next week at UCLA. We appreciate it. Okay, that's Coach Riley over here is C.D. Lamb, so I'm going to head that way. Hey, C.D., uh, not a bad game out there. You guys put up 70 points today. How did Jalen engineer this offense and get you guys going? Uh, he kept his composure. Uh, he, he, he did what Coach Riley uh, preached every day, and uh, just to keep his composure and be a great leader to this offense, and uh, he did a great job tonight. You see this defense all the time at practice. Can you tell a difference in that it's grown since last year? Uh, if you can't tell, then I, I mean, <laughs> we have these guys at 14 points, and they're great offense, great, great everything. They, they've done all the right things, great coaches, and uh, for us to hold them up to 14 points is, I mean, it kind of talks for itself. You're an exciting player to watch, CD. What can people expect from you this year? Uh, just to keep building off my last game, man. I, I'm going to finish pick every small detail, critique myself, and uh, just hope to come out better next week. All right, so as a team, if you critiqued you guys, what do you have to do better until UCLA next week? We got to keep our composure, man. We got to do all things right, the small things. And uh, <clears throat> I'm sure Jalen going to go in there, Coach Riley going to go in there and talk to us about penalties and everything. We just got to make, make, make good habits and uh, just no, no negative penalties. All right, good luck to you next week and the rest of the season. Thanks, CD. Guys, he already knows what they're going to talk about <laughs> and what they need to improve before next week. Uh, I think they're conditioned to think that already. Our Pizza Hut player of the game tonight is going to be CD Lamb, Gary. I wanted to ask him what does the, the talk on, on his little eye, eye, eye liner mean there, but no doubt about it. CD Lamb is an explosive player, a guy who can make plays, and he just adjusts routes. I think he's got a good chemistry with Jalen Hurts because he is able to adjust routes and adjust on the football when it's in the air. Great body control and a great range be able to go up and catch the ball at his highest point and stretch out and make catches and he's always seems to be available to Jalen Hurts as a receiver that's going to be able to catch passes and I think uh, those two have a real special chemistry that is that has emerged and should pay dividends throughout the season. Ten Sooners scored in the game. C.D. Lamb was one of them. C.D. Lamb an outstanding game tonight 144 yards receiving. We'll come back to Norman and wrap things up after this. Sooners with eight tackles for a loss. They forced a fumble. Three quarterback hurries. All part of the defense as we take a look at our final statistics. Sooners end up with 733 yards, 33 first downs, Gary. Yeah, it's been an impressive night here for Oklahoma, the, what they did offensively. And I really think the defense kind of came of age here, and I think they see the, the light at the end of the tunnel that they're going to be able to be a, an elite defense with speed and tenacity. And, but the talent that they have offensively with the quarterback, Jalen Hurts, and the wide receiver core that they have, it separates them really from anybody in the country because those, those two components are really what make this offense humming in Lincoln Riley. And he's shown, you know, for several years that he's going to have a potent offensive plan for his team to, to, to develop and work with. And, you know, we get to combine that uh, run with defensive play that has been superlative, and I think it was tonight, playing with a lot of speed, a lot of ability. It's been a lot of fun to watch. Absolutely. Big win for the Sooners, 70-14. to 14. They now head to UCLA. For Gary Reasons, Leslie McCaslin, and our entire crew, I'm Ron Thulin saying so long from Norman, Oklahoma. Sooners win it 70-14. to 14.